All right, guys, I'm going to try to record this all in one go, so let's see what happens. Uh, right now, this is actually a voiceover. I'm not talking while I'm opening this tea bag. I'm watching the video with you and commenting on my actions. And you might be wondering if you've seen my videos before or watch my Twitch streams, why do I suddenly have such a high budget? <laughs> I got a camera, boys. I got a new camera and I really wanted to record a ton of slow motion footage um, of me making tea and it kind of inspired me to make a possible new YouTube series where I drink tea and other sort of non-alcoholic beverages possibly while I draw. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, the tea that I'm drinking is called Thick Zen. It's by Poor Junkie. They are a really great tea dealer that I ordered from recently, as I have been kind of falling down the rabbit hole of drinking more and more expensive teas. This tea is amazing. It's delicious. It is really thick and kind of sweet. Um, I had it quite a bit ago now, so I'm trying to remember exactly how it tasted but just keep my word for it it was delicious hopefully in future i'll be recording um this footage while i'm talking at the same time that way i don't have to come back and do a voiceover i just don't have a microphone yet that is suited for the uh job right now i still have my microphone that i've had for for several years <laughs> I still have the same microphone and it's it's been doing me well, but I actually did order a new microphone and I'm hoping that I'll be able to use it for both my camera and for stuff like Twitch streaming. Look at that pour. In this video here, I'm recording on a new camera and displaying a teapot, which is also new. Behind it is another teapot as well. All three of those things were Christmas related gifts, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you, parents. Thank you, Sam. Uh, very cool. Uh, I just really wanted to record some really high-res video of me drinking tea, but pretty soon here I'm going to start drawing, and look at that lighting. Look at my dorm. Man. Should I put music over this? I don't know. So. I did want to talk about a few things here, I guess, while this video is kind of a test for future possible videos where I sketch in my sketchbook in real time and make tea and drink tea. Uh, so next time I do this, it'll definitely be voiced while I'm drawing. That way you get the honest reaction of me while I'm going through the drawing. And I probably will still record <laughs> fancy B-roll footage of my tea. And I'll try to review the tea that I'm drinking more in depth. I don't really know what to call this sort of video. Drinking and drawing is my go-to title, and I might stick with that, but um, it kind of implies that I'm drinking alcohol when I'm really not. But and I'm going to talk a little bit about my tools, I guess, because that's what I'm pulling out here. My tools for drawing are pretty simple. I just use a, what is it, a 2H or whatever pencil, and then I got a, like an ebony pencil going on. Um, and a colored pencil, a red Prismacolor, I think. It might not be a Prismacolor, I think it's a Prismacolor. And a sharpener and an eraser. And today what we're drawing is portraits. Uh, my faces have been looking kind of wonky recently. In fact, all my art has been looking kind of wonky this month in particular, uh, because I haven't really drawn in a long time. I haven't streamed on Twitch and perhaps people are thinking that I'm drawing when I'm not streaming on Twitch. That's not true. <laughs> I'm not drawing. I didn't draw at all during winter break. I had so many goals and aspirations, but uh, I was hit with just a ton of pet sitting jobs and anxiety and burnout, uh, which is probably going to be the main discussion topic for this video. But even though this is a voiceover, I am drawing in real time. Um, I did not 
speed up the footage or slow it down. I did obviously shoot a whole lot of slow-mo of my tea making, which maybe in future video I'll focus a lot more on the tea rather than just be rolling it because I didn't have a mic. It's not like I could have given my honest tea reaction on the spot. I should have written down what I liked about the tea, but I, I do like it. Anyway, winter break. It's January. I'm a student at SCAD, so we had off from, was it November 13th, 18th? It was either the 13th or the 18th, or maybe the 14th. <laughs> the three and the eight are very similar in my brain. I'm a very visual person, so they look exactly the same. I can't remember which day it was, but it was mid-November mid we had off, and I had off until January 4th, which was my flight back to Savannah. Um, I didn't do any work. <laughs> I literally didn't do anything. I, I, I am hard-pressed to, to say that I didn't draw, like, even a little bit. I can't remember drawing during winter break. Once classes ended, I just kind of stopped. I, I was totally burnt out of my mind and I just was felt so passionless and lost and I hated it. I was like, this sucks, but I didn't know what to do. Um, the burnout was really bad. Luckily, things have changed. When I got back to school, I was still feeling really burnt, but a week or so later now, I feel really good which is, I, I am so surprised by, honestly. Because during winter break, and in fact, last quarter towards the end, I was really starting to chug out of steam. And I think that's really evident because I didn't stream at all during winter break on Twitch. I just took it, took it off. I didn't stream my finals on Twitch either. I didn't show any of my last bits of homework. It was so unlike me, but, um, it was mostly because my attitude was just so, so, so south. I just couldn't uh, stream that kind of mindset. It was just so, I was so negative and depressed and burnt out. Depressed is really a good word. I was really depressed, but more super anxious than depressed. My anxiety was so bad last quarter that I was getting like really bad chest pain and to the point where sometimes I couldn't, I couldn't even breathe. And really bad uh, migraines even towards the end of the quarter. And the beginning of this quarter, right before I came back to school this quarter, I got that migraine again. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so screwed. I'm really, really gonna have a tough time this quarter. I thought I was gonna have a tough time. Granted, it's still the beginning of the quarter. I could still have a, a terribly tough time this quarter, but um, time has passed and I feel better, a lot better. That's due to a lot of factors, but during winter break, it was rough. And I had several professors that were passing around the notion like, if you don't draw during winter break, then you're gonna come back with nothing to show for and nothing to brag about to your peers. So during winter break, I wasn't doing any work and I was feeling so down about it. I was like, I can't even create anything if I wanted to. That's how burnt out I was. And it frustrated me so much. I just felt like a big disappointment, but also I gotta be easier on myself because it's hard being an art student in an art school and you know, having, I guess, a, a job outside of school when you're on break and a convention to go to as well. I went to uh, an anime convention right when break started. I actually came home before the end of the quarter and went to the convention and still finished up classes that same week online. And I tabled there and I sold my art and it was really inspiring and I thought wow I'm gonna come back from this convention anime New York City tabling and selling there and I'm gonna feel so inspired and empowered and I came back and I was just so exhausted oops my phone is going off sorry <clears throat> um 
uh, I'll have to mute that. So, yeah, I, I just just absolutely burnt out this winter, and I, I it's hard to prevent that, and it's easy to be hard on oneself about being burnt out. But after I got back from the convention, I was feeling inspired by other people's work, and I wanted to draw, but I uh, I just couldn't get myself to, and that's when I like decided to like give myself some credit just say hey i did a lot of work this quarter i did really well and now i deserve a break like it's winter break break the word break all caps i didn't draw at all so that's what that's what was going on winter break and when the new semester came around i was still feeling so burnt out <laughs> and I, I thought i was going to come to school and just be pooped immediately and and s skip classes or something and fail out or whatever, but I got to school and I was having that same anxiety migraine that I always have. And then I just started kind of settling. I started going to my classes. I like my professors a lot, a lot, a lot. They're really, both of them. I only, I only have two professors. I have the same professor twice this quarter, so only two professors. I love both of them already, even though it's like week two or three only. And that, that really helps is when you find your professors to be someone inspiring. That helped me get through last quarter, that's for sure, was having a sequential professor that I thought was just the coolest dude ever. And my storyboarding professor was really cool last quarter as well too. Uh, no comment on my animation professor though. It, that could really help you, having professors that, that you could look up to and let, let them empower you, especially if they were students at the school that you're attending. That's also really a bonus. But anyway, I came back, I was having the migraines, and uh, something weird happened. I'm still investigating this. <laughs> Maybe, uh, let me talk about this drawing first, because I just, I just switched pencils again, and I feel like I should comment on what I'm doing. Um, uh, portrait studies, how I do them, I don't know. I just observe and draw what I see. I find them to be really easy to do, especially for people that I don't know. I can't draw people that I know because my brain messes it up because I know their face too well already. This portrait study in particular, and actually all portrait studies I've been doing recently, I start in the, in the red, the red pencil to kind of sketch out the overall shape of the face. And then I come in with a light pencil and I do a little bit of detail work and then I come in with the dark. And then I go back to using light later again, but whatever. Um, it's a lot of experimentation. I basically just browse Pinterest, pick people that I think are pretty <laughs> or have interesting features. Not doesn't always have to be pretty, pretty women or whatever, but, and then I just draw from observation. And I think I've been getting good at them or better at them. Still not perfect, but definitely getting better than last time I did this. Anyway, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, my anxiety. <laughs> what a random topic. Uh, yeah, so winter break recap. Sorry if you guys hear the sirens outside. I do live in Savannah right now, so it's really loud all the time. Winter break, I didn't do anything. Literally nothing. Oh, I did pet sit a lot and I made a lot of money, but I spent about half of that <laughs> on expensive tea. I've been really getting into tea for the past, like, I think it's been two years now since I started getting into tea drinking. I've kind of fallen down this rabbit hole of drinking Chinese tea. Chinese tea is my favorite. Uh, it's all from like the same plant as well. So pretty fascinating stuff. I've been getting really into poor, which has been kind of a wallet sink, but when I came to school, and trust me, this all connects, I swear. When I came to school, I uh, I had been, for most of my tea drinking time, actually for all of my tea drinking time, and I drink a lot of tea on Twitch and everywhere. Everyone knows me as a big tea drinker for the past two years or whatever. I've mostly been drinking kind of inexpensive flavored teas. As, as one does when getting into tea, or perhaps that's just what you prefer. It's all good. I don't judge. Uh, but I decided, uh, you know, I like poor. I like this, this cheap uh, 
show poor that I bought, cheap ripe poor. I I liked it and I was like, I would I really want to try the real stuff. And my friend and my mom both got me. I'm sorry, Santa, <clears throat> Santa Claus. My friend and Santa Claus both bought me teapots this this uh, winter, and I decided like two teapots. I could do the two types of poor and thinking to myself, I need to buy good tea for these teapots, I need to, otherwise it's just a waste, you know, they're good teapots. So I, I go and I go on r slash poor, <laughs> and I'm looking at poor sellers, and I basically just buy a heck ton of poor. I buy a lot, and uh, spend a lot of money. I spend most of my dog setting money, I still have some, but for the most part I spent, spent it on various things and i start drinking well first of all i come to school i'm having these migraines um i have my little teapots but i'm not brewing anything in them because i don't have tea to go in them and eventually tea comes in from poor junkie who we just saw uh in this little video that you're watching i'm drinking some of his tea I'm drinking thick zen his teas were the first to come in since then, I've tried a couple other brands, but his are the first that have come in, mostly because he is a US-based seller. And getting tea out of China right now is just takes a long time. It's not impossible, but it does take a while. You have to wait a while. So he was a US seller that I ordered from and was thrilled to receive his tea and try all of them immediately. Obviously, this was recorded quite a bit ago now, which is explaining everything, I guess. Um, I started drinking the tea uh, about, I think it was about the 7th of, of, G of January. So I got back on the 4th, was having these migraines. And then I started drinking the tea, and I didn't really notice this until uh, like a week later. I started drinking the tea and my migraines went away. And I was like, what? You know, I wasn't looking for a solution to my anxiety when I started drinking tea. And I still don't know if that's what this is. I, I, my anxiety was so bad last quarter, I was looking into like possibly getting on medication, but didn't want to, hesitant about it. So I don't know if this is the tea or just me being more mindful. I think it's a combination of me drinking poor tea and brewing in the Chinese Gong Fu tea uh, technique and the meditation that kind of comes with that. So both meditation and tea are curing my anxiety. That's not something I would ever think I would ever say, but it happened like that. You know, I just like tea and I wanted to try some tea. Next thing I know, my migraines are going away and I wake up and I drink my tea and I feel empowered to go to class. and not anxious about the future or about my work. I feel uh, like secure. Like I'm not worried, sorry I'm saying like so much. I'm not worrying so much about what's gonna happen. And that could just be growth. It could just be the meditation or it could be the tea. I have no idea what it is. All I know is I started drinking good tea and I started feeling better. So I've just continued to drink tea. <laughs> continue to meditate <laughs> and it's become a part of my schedule now so that's me coming back from school <laughs> coming back to school sorry uh, suddenly my anxiety feels a lot better I am not burnt out anymore I have ideas and art that I want to make YouTube stuff I'm once again, looking into merchandise and apparel, whatnot, even though I know I'll not get into that for a while. I don't know, it's just kind of exciting. Like, I'm actually uh, getting back to work for once after, oh, like, last quarter was just rough. Especially the ending of last quarter. Rough. Rough stuff. And here I am, in my sketchbook. This is the first time I drew my sketchbook since... <laughs> since probably November and it's January now so it was a good comeback was to do 
portrait studies. I did about three of them, so this is just the first one that you're gonna see. Obviously, this is a long video. I don't have to talk the entire time either, so I could pause at any point and let you guys breathe and not have to listen to me, but I figure people like hearing my voice. Uh, I l <laughs> this girl I'm drawing, <laughs> she is so cool looking. I can't get over it. And the hair? I had a good time drawing the hair. I don't know if I got the texture right um, in those points or not. But the rest of the hair, I feel like I definitely got the shapes on, on the spot. I was more trying to stay loose and keeping it kind of freestyling it, I guess, not really thinking too much about the hair, more so just having fun with it. That's usually the answer to drawing good hair. And I realize now that this is the only portrait that I did that day that has hair, so enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> this person is really just dope looking. It was a fun subject to draw. Uh, I love doing portrait studies, and people like looking at my portrait studies, which kind of pisses me off. I don't... I <laughs> I don't know, if you're an artist, maybe you understand this. Unless you are a portrait artist, if so, um, good for you. If you get compliments on your portraits, that's a good thing. For me, I should, maybe I should just shop, stop showing my parents my portrait studies, because when I show them to that, when I show them these portrait studies, it's always, I didn't know you were capable of that, or wow, you're actually getting serious with your art. And I'm just like, wait, what are you talking about, bro? I do these studies so that my anime inspired cartoon, manga, comic art can look better. I know that this is a controversial subject. And I think it might just be different per person. And that's what's making it so controversial. Everyone has a different approach to art. But my approach is that I need to have the fundamentals down. I need to know what things look in realism in order to translate them into an abstract form. That's just the way that it is for me. I can't do it any other way. Other people might be different, but for me, that's just the way that I've always done it. That's the way that I was taught, and that's the way that it works. Some people, maybe it works differently, and that's why it's so controversial. A lot of artists will say, that's not true, I could draw cartoons, and I've never studied a single figure, and s sometimes it just works out that way. I'm not about to say there's one way to do things, because there just is not. That's not how art works. There's a billion ways to learn different things. You could learn anime probably before realism, but it doesn't, doesn't work for me. So when my parents say, or not even just my parents, family, friends, strangers <laughs> on the internet go, wow, I can't believe you're, you're doing realism. You're taking it so seriously. I can't believe it. It's a miracle. You're finally drawing <laughs> realistically. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I it, to be fair, um, I can un I understand. You know, it, looking at it from the perspective of a non-artist, realism is seen as like, I guess, the pinnacle of art. One thing, oh, I can't say this. I am going to say this. The one art that I really hate, and there is nothing. I have nothing against the artists that make these this type of art. It's just not my cup of tea for consumption. You know. I don't like consuming this type of art. It bores me. It's people that draw so realistically that it looks like you're looking at like an 8K resolution photograph or something like that. Like it looks like a photograph, exactly. I just can't stand that. Um, I need something with a little oomph, <laughs> with a little bit of stylization. And even my portrait studies are pretty stylized. I mean, the... the Pencil strokes. I can only draw realism in pencil, by the way. <laughs> I really can't do it in any other medium. Uh, the pencil strokes and the eyes are still a little bit anime sometimes. All that is stylization. When I see those Instagram videos of people drawing so realistically, I just, I'm like, man, it's boring. <laughs> and uh, 
I don't know what it's like to be an artist that does that. I think that the, a lot of artists that do that find their gratification through trying to get as real as possible. And that I respect that so much. That's like how the old masters used to think. They were like, oh, this has to look real AF because they didn't have photos back then. To me, it's like, uh, that'll just bore me. That'll just bore the hell out of me. I can't do that. <laughs> it takes a lot of skill and a lot of talent to be able to produce something so realistically. And my God, I don't want to put in the effort to learn something like that because it's just not what I want to make. Anyway, I, am I almost done with this portrait? I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't believe that I drew it this quickly. This video is only like an hour long, so to do three portraits in an hour, I'd say that's a pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good time. Time is pretty good there. I do like how this one came out. It looked rough for a little, a little while in there. Like uh, this paper towel, I don't know if it was a good idea or a bad idea when I grabbed it, but it, it was an idea and it did not work out in the beginning. It kind of ruined what I had done and I was sad. But then when I went to go fix the mistake that the paper towel made, the, the portrait ended up looking better. So I don't know, uh, up, to, up to perspective, I guess. Looking back, I wouldn't have changed anything that I did here, but still interesting to think about how after I used this paper towel, I was like, oh, this looks terrible. And it does look terrible after I use the paper towel, but going back in and fixing it, things look gorgeous. <laughs> it's so complimentary, self-complimentary. Oh my goodness. So yeah, that's, that's the tale of my anxiety and how I feel when people look at my portrait studies. I think I'm just going to stop showing them to people. Just kidding, I'm gonna make an entire YouTube video of me doing three portrait studies. <laughs> the last one might surprise you. <laughs> the last portrait study is a, is a doozy. Um, I, I'm not too sure if I like how it came out, but I think that was a hard, I'm not even gonna talk about it. Figure to translate over into a portrait, but whatever, I'll talk about that later. Let's talk about school. That's where I am right now. That's what's on the mind. I'm at school right now, I'm in my I'm back in my dorm at SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design, animation major, graduating, uh, I don't know when I'm graduating, sometime probably early 2023. Let's put my, uh, put my money, put my foot down, bet some money on that. I got my graduation set for winter, I hope. Probably not, but we'll see. I have no plans on doing more than two years at SCAD. In fact, <laughs> I can't say that. If I have to do more than two years, I might just drop, but th I, that would be ridiculous. I'd find a way to do it sneakily, probably, the last year. Because well, I, I really don't want to pay housing for three years. That's ridiculous. The school is so expensive. The debt is going to hit me hard when I get out. But right here, right now, I'm here. I'm in the now. I'm taking classes once again in my dorm uh, my quiet peaceful little dorm with my loud upstairs neighbors and my leaky ceiling in the bathroom and my half functioning toilet and boiling hot water in the shower <laughs> I love the building I love the building that I'm in I'll do a dorm tour of right before I move out, because I don't want to do it while I still live here. That's scary to show you all where I live right, bef right while I still live here. No way. I'll do it before the quarter ends, probably. So how's been the new quarter? Uh, SCAD, I, I don't know if I should talk about this or not. Like, will I get in trouble for this? Probably not. I'm going to try to be objective about it. I don't want to be on anyone's blacklist for trash talking my school. Uh, I'm not going to trash talk the school. I'm just going to state the facts here because yeah, I'm sure that they're trying their best and also it's a business and they have to make money and I don't know what their financial situation is looking like so I want to be cautious with what I say here but uh, there are some worrying protocols happening right now and I'm gonna go through them I'm gonna go through what it's like to be a student at SCAD right now 2022 January 
during Omicron. Currently, SCAD does not have a hybrid option for their classes, meaning we have to attend classes in person um, or else you don't attend them at all. There are online classes. And to me, I was like, okay, I'll just take next quarter online. You know, this new strain is looking a little kooky crazy. Everyone I know is getting sick. I'll just do it online. Um, my classes aren't available online. Which sucks. I would have probably taken maybe one or two online and one in person, or I would have just taken all of them online and stayed at home, but I already paid for the dorm, so I don't know what I would have done, but all I know is I have to go to class and professors aren't really allowed to make Zooms for students that are sick. You have to go through the whole school contact tracing protocol. Uh, there's no vaccination requirements here at SCAD. We're running out of COVID tests. <laughs> not everyone can get tested whenever they want. You're not obligated to report if you traced with someone with COVID if they're not your roommate. It's really a whole mess. And I, I know a lot of people that are sick right now that are students. I've just had a professor who's out. He's out right now. It sucks. I don't know his situation completely. All I know is that he's out and we did class on Zoom this morning. So those are just the facts of what's going on here at the school right now and what it's like. Uh, we're all masked up and in the buildings. It's just trying our best to not get ill. And we'll see what happens by the end of the quarter. I mean, it's Numbers are higher than they were last quarter here, but what what am I going to do about it? I have to go to school. I can't hold off college anymore. I really can't. I'm like 22 already, so. <laughs> if, if I was like 19, like my, some of my classmates are 19. If I was 19, I wouldn't come to school. <laughs> I'd be, and I didn't, to be fair. <laughs> when I was, when I was 19 or However old I was, I didn't always go to school. Sometimes I vanished off the face of the earth. <laughs> uh, SCAD is very complicated, and not only is it very complicated, but my situation is kind of strange. I'm older, and I'm just really tired of being a student. I want to be able to call myself a graduate. You know, I graduated. I'm an alum. That, that's something that I just want to say really bad. So. I'm trying to kind of push my way through this. I figure since I'm not home, if I get sick, I'll, I'll be sick alone and it'll be okay because that means I don't get my mom sick. We're all good. That's the, that was the main worry with me in COVID was that, God forbid, I get my mother sick. I'm screwed. So, or my dad even. I don't know how he'd handle it either, to be honest. <laughs> He's a pretty, a pretty, uh, I don't know, brittle old man these days. <laughs> dare I say, <laughs> brittle. Uh, I don't want to get anyone sick, so I figure if I'm at school and I get ill, I got a pretty okay immune system. It could cause lifelong damage, which is why I'm still being careful, but it's way better than being at home and having to struggle with my parents. <clears throat> so that's that. I don't know. I'm here. The classes that I'm taking are... Uh, I'm taking world building. Taking character design and creature design. That's one class. And I have narrative principles, which actually, I actually get to write in. I'm so thrilled about that, that I have, that I could write for a class. I don't have to draw for one of my classes. It's awesome. Couldn't be happier about that. I love writing. I'm not like, I'm not a, I'm not a writer, but I enjoy writing and I'm excited to, uh, to write for that class and not have to draw. But I like all my classes right now, and they're really fun. Uh, the professors are amazing. Both of them are really cool guys. I, I, don't, I wish I could say their names, but I'm just not going to. It, it wouldn't be right. <laughs> no one does that on the internet. That's scary to say that your professor's name's on the internet. Uh, but they're both cool. They're both cool. All right, that, uh, look at that angle change that just happened. <laughs> uh, this camera is fascinating, by the way. The way that it kind of captures everything is just really cool. It's really HD and the lighting can get really tricky in the dorm. I have this kind of lamp 
and I have my overhead lights, and I have my other lamps. I got so the the first lamp is like a desk a desk lamp, and then I have two actual lamps, and then I have my overhead lights, and then I just say, Lord, please don't cast a massive cast shadow on my uh, sketchbook, which I have a feeling I might hear by accident. I'm I'm think drinking tea throughout this whole process. By the way, I I drink tea all day, and here you can't actually see the. Sorry, little hiccup. You can't see the subject that I'm drawing. That's interesting. So it'll be a surprise. <laughs> and you may be surprised. Uh, I guess. This is not a pretty a pretty woman, that's for sure. But I, I might bring it into frame at some point. Or I might not. You'll just have to wait to see what it, what it ends up looking like. Uh, but I really did enjoy doing this study. Possibly even more than I did the first study. I just like playing with shapes like this a lot. The harder edges and bulkier proportions are definitely something that I enjoy drawing a hell of a lot. And I find that when I'm doing this anime inspired cartoony comic -y art, I'm oftentimes missing out on uh, people and characters that have these shapes and I need to study them more. I really want to stylize my art further a little bit push it a little bit further, try different types of styles and different proportions that aren't just standard anime proportions. It's just hard for me to do. I'm still learning. But doing studies like this, obviously this helps. I mean, look at that nose. It's, it's like almost the size of mine, I guess. Uh, when, you know, once again, starting out with the red pencil, of course. I think it's actually not red. I think it might be terracotta. Or is it red? I have two, and I always get them mixed up. That is red. It says cr crimson right there. I just read that. Let me drink some water real quick. I'm going to leave you guys alone in the dark for a second. trying to decide whether I should put music or not over this. I, I could do a Twitter poll. <laughs> I might do music. I might not. I don't know. It, uh, it's so difficult. I feel like a lot of people really like the podcast format these days. Podcasting is going crazy. This is cutting it pretty close to a podcast. I already have backseat drawing and now I'm making drinking and drawing. What is my YouTube channel become? I don't, I really want to bring back backseat drawing. Haha. <laughs> but the, uh, the amount of work that I have to put into <laughs> it is kind of annoying. I have to say, I don't edit backseat drawing at all. I don't edit that at all. I have an editor. Uh, but I'd have to like find, you know, find a guest and then having to make myself comfortable talking to, to usually strangers on the internet can be a bit tough, I find. Uh, I get anxious. I know I don't sound like I get anxious. I don't sound like an anxious person. My voice is very still, but I do get nervous and <laughs> talking to strangers will make me nervous. So I don't really want to, I want to bring it back, but I would like to bring it back with more people I, that I've met through my journey. So if I, it might become a rarer thing if I do bring it back and it might become more of like, this is my classmate, or this is someone I worked with at this place, or I was in a club with this person, or uh, you know, whatever. Uh, the one thing I am okay with is if it's another Twitch streamer, I think. It's another art Twitch streamer, because I've heard their voice, and I probably listen to them a lot, or enough, then it's probably more comfortable than it just being someone on Instagram that I follow, you know? It's also really hard for me to get guests. I'm always looking at my follower count and realizing how small I am and how big other people are and that why would they want to be on my silly my silly little podcast they're not really going to gain anything from it because I'm so small but I, I don't know I'm the one who gains from it I guess I just love talking to people and learning about their processes but 
it, it, it's intimidating. And I think that's the part that makes me anxious about it. It's not the fact that I'm talking to strangers. It's mostly the fact that I'm talking to people that are way bigger than me usually. I think that's the scary part, but it's fine. Our, every single backseat drawing podcast with air quotes that we did, I loved. I loved all the guests. They were all awesome and it was just so much fun and I'm really wanting to bring it back. But here we are with, <laughs> am I really gonna call it drinking and drawing? <laughs> it's kind of sticking. It's sticking. It is. It's sticking in my brain. I can't get it out. I think I'm going to call it drinking and drawing. What if YouTube gets mad about that? I don't know. Ooh. They're going to be like, are they drinking booze on there? Is that a beer? No. Is that a, what do they call the alcoholic oh, tw twisted tea? Is that twisted tea? Maybe I'll, be, I'll like, I'll make a, a bunch of drinking and drawing videos and they all have just regular tea. And then one day, somewhere in the middle there, I just sneak in and an alcoholic tea <laughs> and just no one snitch I probably won't do that but um, I don't drink a whole lot I usually just drink tea I drink tea all day for the most part now ever since my tea started helping my anxiety a knock on wood I don't really know if that's correct or not if that's what's helping my anxiety or not but all I know is that I started drinking tea my anxiety got a little bit better so now I drink quite a bit of tea every day. I, I have my morning tea and then I have my afternoon tea and that's it. But that's more than, than usual. I usually would just have a cup of tea every other morning. Now I have it, I have to have it every morning. And I, I usually do meditation, sitting meditation when I'm drinking it in the morning as well. It's not just about the tea, it's about the vibes. Um, in the afternoon, I usually drink a little bit of grandpa-style tea where the loose leaf is just in the cup floating around, but it really it sinks. It doesn't really float. And I drink that while I'm doing homework just to keep me focused on my homework, I guess. There's a lot of studies about tea online, and a lot of it is proven science at this point. Tea has specific chemicals. Is that... I guess they're chemicals, yeah. I mean, they're natural, but most things are natural. Everything is natural. Anyway, tea has these chemicals in them. One of them is L-theanine. There's also these things called catechins, catechins, catechins. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And of course, caffeine. Apparently tea doesn't have a lot of caffeine. I always kind of knew that tea is not that caffeinated. Uh, I've never felt a caffeine buzz on tea, but unless I drink a mad amount. But what I do feel is the result of that theanine and the catechins, I guess, which studies show keeps you more focused, makes you happier and calmer. And maybe that's why I'm able to, to draw more now and that's why I'm less anxious now. I don't really know, hard to say. So I'm doing a little bit more research right now into tea. I'm ordering more teas to try. <laughs> I love tea. Whether it fixed my anxiety or not, I'd probably be hooked on tea. It doesn't matter. But because it's been helping my anxiety, I've been kind of digging around a little bit online about meditation and Tai Chi. I've been doing Tai Chi in my room. That sounds really silly, but uh, I find that Tai Chi, meditation, tea all kind of come together to form a nice coping skill <laughs> qigong uh these are all like like uh taoist practices i guess that's where i went with the tea i went around on google looking for what connections tea has to other parts of chinese medicine and here I am practicing Tai Chi in my room. <laughs> I'm not very good at it, but it's fun. I have to say, I'm enjoying it. I've been doing some reading, uh, f some philosophy reading, bizarre for me. I don't know what's happening to me. I think I'm just uh, vibing. I think I'm just vibing. Um, it's hard to say. Maybe I'm going through some kind of spiritual renaissance. <laughs> 
when I was in high school, I, I decided to like study a little bit of paganism. And that was fun. But I decided after a while, I didn't like paganism. I, I was like, I don't know. It's kind of over glamorized by the internet. This crystal collecting, Ouija board wielding, tarot card dealing, Tumblr witches. And I decided I was falling into that trap. And I didn't want that to be me. So, I'm hoping that this is not that. <laughs> that I'm not falling into another trap. Um, I think this all works out, actually, because I've always loved martial arts. I do martial arts pretty infrequently, I have to be honest, I really need better consistency. But I've always done martial arts my entire life. When I was a kid, I did Taekwondo for years. When I was in high school and middle school, I fenced for, I don't know, like seven to eight years of fencing. And then when I uh, went in college, I did Aikido for maybe a year or two before COVID, especially. I stopped before COVID, but then when COVID hit, I decided that COVID was going to be my excuse not to go back. And uh, after that, during winter break, I forgot to talk about this. How could I? During winter break, I started up judo and jujitsu and <laughs> I tore an ab muscle while I was doing it and I was on the DL for the rest of winter break. It really pissed me off. I was really getting into it. I found this amazing uh, dojo slash gym nearby my house and they have all these martial arts and the owner's really, really cool. And I was happy to be there. I was like, yes, I like this. And then I got injured and I was like, no, I spent 14 hours, 14 hours, 14 hours in the ER dying, thinking I had a hernia or appendicitis or something. I only have a torn ab, which thank God it was only a torn ab because I would, did not want to get surgery. But that sucked. So <laughs> I've always loved martial arts. I've always, I've loved tea for the past two years and philosophy. I really like the philosophy of just Taoism in general. It connects with me a little bit. Like, I feel like that's the way I've been thinking for years, but now it's kind of connecting. I've always meditated my whole, I feel like my whole life I've been a meditative person. So all this coming together kind of makes sense. It, would, it only makes sense that I would do Tai Chi in my dorm. <laughs> And I have a ton of space in my dorm as well. I have, I have no roommate, so my room is kind of massive, honestly. It's pretty big. Uh, I've been into my neighbor's dorms and it always looks so small, but I guess when you are only one person and you don't own a lot of stuff, I'm not very material person, it gets, it gets kind of uh, empty. And it creates this amazing floor for me to do Tai Chi and Qigong doing both of them. I could be pronouncing both of those wrong, by the way. I'm not learning in person, so difficult for me to tell. I'm learning these in my dorm, and it's been really nice, and the stretching is really good as well. The philosophy is really fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How did I get on this topic? Tea? Tea led me here. This is all tea's fault. Tea and books. I... I... I was researching tea and I found some books and the books mentioned Taoism along with tea and I was like okay let's do a little googling and here I am doing Tai Chi which is a martial art I never thought I would do ever I always saw Tai Chi and went well it looks like they're just just vibing what's the point of this I didn't really get it now I definitely get it. I definitely see what the point of Tai Chi is. I, I didn't know what the value was before. Uh, I come from a very Chinese neighborhood. Chinese and Jewish. That's where my that's the main populations of my town. So there's a large amount of Chinese martial arts, Kung Fu, Tai Chi, etc. Wushu, uh, all in my town. It's crazy. And we have Chinese New Year and other festivities going on all the time and I'd always see the Tai Chi people in the park uh, pretty frequently doing Tai Chi and I'd always be confused what they were doing. But they look like that they're waterbending, 
which I think is what waterbending is based off of. Uh, but I never understood why. I, I figured it was just Chinese yoga, which it comes pretty close, but there's definitely way more to Tai Chi than, than just that. And it's really fun. And you get to memorize these forms. Oh, I just, I'm enjoying it. I'm trying to learn in Qigong the uh, five animal form. And it's been, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm not a, not a fast learner by any means, but I'm having a good time for sure. I just didn't know. I had no idea. I had no idea it would be it would be cool. I've always loved uh, kung fu, but never really was able to get into it. Mainly because I love grappling. My f maybe I like grappling, but when I'm alone in my dorm, I want to do tai chi. That's cool, you know. I've always loved the grappling. I've always loved the the wrestling and the and the flipping someone over your your back and stuff and rolling around and. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's the fun fighting. Striking is not really something that I enjoy doing or receiving. <laughs> so oh, during winter break, starting up judo and jujitsu and just MMA in general, I guess, was a good, a good decision. That's the fighting style that I like. But uh, I'm seeing Tai Chi and Qigong, I guess, as well. Not really as martial martial arts, but as martial arts, like an art. More meditative, more flowing, feeling the earth and going with the wind and feeling like water and stuff. It's really cool. Uh, this guy I'm drawing here, by the way, I never showed the reference for him. I don't know if I ever do, but isn't he just got the coolest shape Face of all time, I have to say. It was really fun to draw. I don't know if these people know. There's a lot of uh, Pinterest models <laughs> out there. You go on Pinterest and there's a billion portrait photography of all kinds of people. And I wonder if they know that they're being drawn by people surfing around Pinterest. I wonder maybe I should post a selfie on Pinterest and see if people bite. <laughs> see if I become a Pinterest model by accident. But... I wonder if guys like this know that uh, people are drawing him. He could be a famous person, by the way, and I would have no idea. I mean, I watch, like, no television or film. I don't watch anything. It's terrible. When I'm at school, too, I don't even watch anime or play any video games. When I'm at school, I just do nothing uh, for the most part, which is good. It's good to do nothing, I have to say. Doing nothing is good. But I really don't watch TV. And I really don't watch movies, so I don't recognize actors. And what's even worse is I don't listen to a lot of music. I really don't listen to a lot of music. Uh, so I don't know a lot of music artists either. I'm out of the loop. I'm a boomer. Pulled, pulled a total boomer. I don't know anything about celebrities or what's trendy or whatever. I don't have a TikTok or anything. I'm just totally lost in the sauce. My friends were joking around with me the other day because I don't know, oh gosh, how do I pronounce this artist's name? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not pronounced Mitski. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Mitski. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> I got made fun of for not knowing who that was. I, and to be fair, they just made fun of me and never explained who this person was. So I don't, still don't know who they are. But <laughs> probably never will. Anyway, here's the last uh, last bit of this portrait study session. This is the last portrait I have to do. And perhaps you could see here that to the left is some sketching, some doodling. I would like to not take credit for those doodles. A classmate of mine did them while we were working on uh, our film for the 24 hour film challenge at SCAD. Those are thumbnail storyboards that she drew. I did not draw those. I cannot take credit for that. <laughs> Just in case you were curious as to what's sitting next to this character I'm drawing. And I'm not showing the reference of this character either, which is fun. Can you guess who this is, I wonder? Uh, maybe, maybe not. 
if, if if you can guess at this point in the drawing, you're 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 a god probably. I did struggle a lot with this one, and I think making it into a quick sketch. This one is not nearly as long as the other drawings. Making this one into more of a quickie than the other ones it made it way easier, and it's way way looser, way sketchier. I think that helped the drawing a lot because it wasn't looking too hot. I think if I polished it too much and the foundation was wrong, it would end up looking even worse. So to keep it sketchy, even if the foundation is incorrect, it's okay. But I struggled like hell with this one and I was about to uh, just, just call it and cut it out of the video, but I actually did finish the sketch somewhat successfully, I'd say, and kept it in. But I think I'm happy with how this one came out. I don't know. I'm happy with how all of them came out. This one's probably the one that I'm least satisfied about. But then again, it's a character that is really difficult to translate over to a portrait that is realistic. It's the character is from something that is not so realistic. But I did study a 3D sculpt of this character rather than looking at its source material, which made it easier for sure. So if this image looks familiar to you, it's because uh, I'm using a reference that is another artist's art. And I'm, I do not take credit at all for it, obviously, Jesus. Uh, I, reference is extremely important to have. And, and if you're gonna reference other people's 3D models, that's chill, just keep in mind that they make mistakes too. And don't take credit, <laughs> don't take credit for it and you should be solid. So I think I've cleared all my, uh, uh, everything I needed to clear up in order to not get canceled for referencing someone else's work. But, uh, I don't know, it, it, it's just, it looks, it looks so wonky. I still don't know how I like, it looks really wonky right now. It gets better, I swear it gets better, but in the beginning, it looked really wonky. And to the right are my other drawings that I just did, but you can see I already actually color blocked them in and my camera died when I was doing that, so I lost that. But they are color blocked. I finished it up off camera. And I will color block this one in as well. By now, you might be able to guess what character this is. I think that, that those tendons kind of seal the deal. I have not seen the new season of Attack on Titan. I, ha I haven't seen uh, much anime at all. During winter break, I really didn't watch much either. To be, to be fair, I didn't really watch anything during winter break. Or do, what did I do on winter break? Slept? I think I slept a lot. But when I'm at school, I don't really watch anything. Uh, I don't know why that is. I do have the time sometimes to, to watch something or to play a video game, but I think I just feel so tired that I don't or try to do something more productive in my free time. Rather than watching an anime, I'd rather record a voiceover for a YouTube video or script a video or do some writing for my comic that might never release, who knows, or work on some homework or watch some tutorials, whatever. I try to be productive. Whenever I watch something like anime or play a video game, I always get the worst feeling of guilt in the world, especially when I'm in my dorm. Of like, I'm at school, um, I'm wasting money sitting here not studying. <laughs> my tuition is wasted if I don't study. <laughs> so I, I always try to do something, and maybe that's why I'm so burnt out by the end of the quarter, but I don't know. Uh, I, was, I watched a lot of anime when I was in community college. I think a part of that is because I was still home and because I wasn't so freaked out. Smaller classes, different different field. Now I'm in animation and am I really in animation? Uh, debatable, but my major has animation in it. By the way, I don't you guys got to give me some YouTube video ideas. I have a bunch written down. Would you like to hear some? The video's almost over. I don't think anyone's going to hear this part of the video, but, uh, <clears throat> book club. I thought about doing a book club. 
or not really a book club, but maybe a book review. And then at the end of the video, I'll talk about what books I plan on reading next. And then you guys could read them with me, possibly try to maybe, who knows? Uh, but yeah, a video where I review books that I'm reading. I've been reading a lot, so I'm gonna try to read a book or more every month. I would love to make a book club. Uh, a not so brief explanation on the difference between SCAD's animation majors. There's I think four majors for animation here at SCAD. I thought that would be hella useful for all of you all to hear. <laughs> Some of these ideas are just awful, aren't they? They really are just terrible. Uh, I have your drinking and drawing, which is what we're doing right now. Look at my high school sketchbook. Can't do that because my sketchbook's at home. I wanted to do some commentary videos about weird art stuff that I find on the internet. I actually have a list of weird art projects or artists that I've discovered and would like to make videos on. So one of them is, uh, sorry, hiccup, uh, Cerebus which is a really weird comic that people never seem to talk about. And I would love to make a video on that as well. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't get too ahead of, ahead of myself here. A lot of these videos are about art school. I wanna try to talk about art school on my YouTube videos a bit. I don't wanna make YouTube videos about art school after I get out of art school because I feel like being there in the moment is really important. After I graduate, maybe I'll make one video looking back reflecting but I think that you're going to get the most out of me right now while I'm still there so I wanted to make some videos related to SCAD and related to going to art school in general we'll see which ones I make I don't know a lot of them are gonna be SCAD focused for sure but I'll try to keep some of them general I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I don't know if I'm going to make a billion YouTube videos or not, if I'm going to keep up or not. Uh, I really want to start doing Kofi coffee posting more as well. There's some stuff that I want to bring to over there. I have a couple ideas. I'm just trying to get back into it after a very long hiatus. I took quite the long break. I didn't stream. I didn't make any videos. I didn't draw. So coming back, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to catch up on, and there's a lot to talk about, but we'll see. We'll see how far I get. Take it one video at a time. Take it one Twitch stream at a time. Once I get the equipment that I need to get back to streaming with, I'm still missing a couple uh, bits and pieces to my tablet and whatever. It's just a pain in the neck, I know, so. Uh, the post office is really backed up right now at school. A lot of my mail is just stuck in there. <laughs> I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to shake the post office employees. They're like, give me my stuff. I know it's back there. But they're so overworked. I feel so bad for them. I, I really, every time I go in there and I'm like, I think my medication might be in the back somewhere. Uh, you guys didn't send me an email about it, but I really need it and they can't find it, I just feel, I'm like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Oh my god, oh my god, I feel so bad, I'm so sorry. Please do not overwork yourself. They, every time I go in there, uh, they're just so backed up. There's so much mail. <laughs> they're the student post office, so I, I just, it's just insane in there every time I go in there, and I, and I, 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 I it's always the same two guys in there, too, working and uh, working their butts off, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Please don't don't rush it. Just take a break, drink some water. Don't worry about my mail. It'll come when it comes, and you guys will process it when it processes. Please don't forget about it. The mail got so bad last quarter, and I think some of this quarter happened already as well, where they like hired people or probably hired students to deliver the mail to uh, the dorms. Uh, insanity. I wish that was my mail that got delivered to my dorm, but <laughs> I guess I'm consistent enough with picking it up on time. There was probably a lot of mail that was just backed up and no one was picking it up and they had to, uh, to, uh, <laughs> dig it out and toss it to the dorms. They were like, we can't have this in here anymore. You need to come pick it up or we're going to drop it off. I have no idea how that goes. Sorry, by the way, if there's been background noise this entire time. There's like 
my upstairs neighbors are very loud. Uh, it sounds very, very crazy up there. And then there's some noises from the city. There's people on the balconies outside. It's crazy out there, I swear. It gets a little bit wild sometimes, but it's fine. I like, uh, I like this dorm, despite it being what it is. I, I won't say what dorm I'm in. Dorm tour before I uh, leave. I got into SCAD Lacoste, so if I do go to Lacoste, France, congrats to me. If that actually happens, I have a feeling it's going to be cancelled. Um, I'll record a dorm tour before that. If not, I have another quarter here before that happens, so... We'll see. We shall see. Looks like I'm almost wrapping this one up over here. This is an ebony pencil, by the way. I think... Oh my goodness, my pencil knowledge is not very good. I've owned the same pencil for years. It's been my pencil. Uh, I don't use mechanical pencils. And I'm not talking about the ebony pencil that I've owned for years. Um, I've owned the same... What is it? 2H? 2, 2H pencil? It's slightly lighter than a regular pencil. You could see it on the left. Uh, uh, my classmate used it for the, the boards over there. I've I stole it from my high school art teacher because I needed a pencil. I didn't have one, <laughs> and uh, I guess it was a good it was a good steal. I've been using it for years now, years, 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 years. It's the only pencil that I use. It's the only pencil that I've ever liked and felt comfortable sketching in. I use it for all my art. For this one, I didn't use it, the, the Titan, the Colossal Titan. I didn't use it here because I just wanted to speed this process up. I really didn't like this sketch, so I skipped right to the ebony. All good, all good. But I really only own that pencil, and then when I want to do a darker graphite, I bring out these ebony pencils that my dad gave me from his job. I think they say some lighting company on them. My dad works in lighting, so they're definitely from his work, but other than that, that's really all that I own for pencils. I have a couple colored pencils that I never use. <laughs> I never I never use color. I don't use a lot of mediums in my sketchbook. My sketchbooks are so boring because I, I like use the same medium on every page. People do fun paint swatches. I try to do some fun Posca color blocking with these. Uh, but for the most part, my sketchbook is hilariously boring. There's just not a lot going on. And I think next time we do a video like this, I'm going to uh, probably paint. I, th I really think I should paint something something. Because I have a lot of watercolor paper in this sketchbook that I actually have not used yet. I, this sketchbook here, I, have I, I've never even talked about this sketchbook before, I think. but. I definitely tweeted about the sketchbook. Uh, my friend bound it for me. She's amazing at it. Uh, and it's a good 75% multimedia paper and a good 25% watercolor paper. I have to say that's probably the ratio. It's the perfect ratio because I don't always use the watercolor paper. I don't want to waste it with stuff like this. but. I, I always like skip over the watercolor paper because I'm working on sketching for homework assignments and stuff. That's another YouTube video idea. I'm gonna maybe show the process of an entire assignment for school. Uh, maybe I'll start that with this assignment that I'm working on. It's really interesting looking. Anyway, off, off track. <laughs> My friend bound me this sketchbook and it's fantastic and I have all this watercolor paper that I haven't really used yet. So I definitely want to uh, go back and use some of the paper that I skipped over. I'm not even close to finishing this sketchbook though. I've had it all pandemic. I think my friend gave it to me near the beginning of the pandemic. So it's become my pandemic sketchbook. I did a sketchbook tour with my last sketchbook. Uh, how many times am I gonna say the word sketchbook? My last sketchbook, I did a sketchbook tour and that was with uh, a really bad camera. Oh, the camera was so bad. And it's so, it's, I can't even tell you how satisfying it is to watch 
my art being drawn in real time in HD. It is unbelievably satisfying. It's so, it's, it feels really good to see that. I, I, I've always wanted a really nice camera. I've always wanted to make YouTube videos. I have made YouTube in the past, but I really wanted to have a good camera to really play with. I've always loved photography and taking pictures and shooting videos of my family and my cat. And having a camera now, it's pretty inspiring. There's just so much I could do with it. The slow-mo footage too is, is just so fun. It's such a good, a good little camera. Sorry, I never named what the camera is. It's the Sony a6400, hashtag not sponsored. Okay guys, <laughs> not sponsored by Sony, but did a lot of research into which camera to get ended up with that one uh, because apparently the later versions of that camera are are like not as good <laughs> there have been several sony cameras after that that sony considers to be an upgrade but are really worse so i i really really like this camera i should i really want to get some other lenses with it but i think that's that's for a future thing anyway uh there's the the colossal titan I have not seen the new season, but I'm excited to see this guy come back, possibly. Is that a spoiler? <laughs> excited to see this guy rendered in Studio Mappa's wonderful CG. They are getting really good at the CG stuff, I, I gotta say. Um, their recent shows have been just awe-inspiring. They did Jujutsu Kaisen, and I loved that to death. Speaking of uh, fan art. Uh, this year I'm going to try to do way less fan art. Way more original art. I'm going to try to do a few big fan art illustrations every year, but I'm going to try to keep the fan art at a minimum since my career kind of focuses more towards original. That's just one of my New Year's resolutions I got going on. I have a few New Year's resolutions. Re resolutions. That being the first one. More original art. The other one being do more martial arts read a book every month, drink more tea, uh, stay healthy. My resolutions are usually pretty broad, <laughs> like staying healthy and drink more tea. I'm, I'm fulfilling the martial arts thing by doing Tai Chi in my room. I'm, I'm counting that. But when I get back to New Jersey, I'd love to go back and do more Judo and Jujutsu. That was a really good time. It felt like Aikido, but, but uh, mm more uh, aggressive <laughs> more useful more I, I got beat up so much they beat the poopy out of me <laughs> they really did <laughs> so here I'm finally grabbing the Posca see this is my attempt at making my sketchbook more interesting I just smudged graphite by the way there's always going to be smudged graphite uh, I cannot prevent the graphite from smudging ever I, and I don't really care enough it's just a sketchbook how you could finally see me uh, do the wonderful Posca. In fact, I think that on Af not After Effects, I'm on Premiere right now. I think that I have to like recrop my footage, like, zoom out a little bit. I think it's zoomed in. So you guys might have been able to see the reference this whole time, but I don't know. Maybe I'll try to keep it cut out if I have to resize it. In any case, uh, it's kind of it, isn't it? It's really the brunt of what I got to talk about. You guys let me know what you want to see on YouTube. If you hated this video, please tell me and I'll just not make any more of them. Uh, next time I do one of these, it'll definitely be in real time with a microphone, unless I want to record one today, because I still don't have a camera mic. But let me know uh, your thoughts. Video, I if you guys have any questions about anything that I might have some kind of mastery on or knowledge of, please ask me. I'm, li I'm literally trying to be the most open person I can. Ooh, I got a cough, hang on. All right, my bad. Anyway, I'm gonna call it here, I think. So I drink some water. And I will see all of you guys next time. Enjoy the rest of this video.